What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 71 of On Shape. We're making, continuing on making our barrel pin. Hopefully this video looks different than all the other tutorial videos I've found so far. I just thought I could make it a little bit smoother process and using some things I didn't see in some of those other videos. One of those being using composite parts and another one being instead of all of these commands, what if we just used Revolve and used it really smart? And that's what we're going to do in this video. So we went from what we have to here. This is where we ended with the last video. So let's continue on. Now, my big brain moment tells me I have this sketch here that I can reference when I'm creating uh, my other parts. And that's what we're going to do. We're actually just going to add on to this. And to what we're going to do then is I'm going to add a line. Let's add a line from here to here, all the way across, and then come down. We need to dimension these lines. So this line thickness is going to be 0 0.05. Same thing for this line down here, 0 0.05. And we're going to use this to make our rubber silicon that's going to go over the barrel pin bottom. There we go. That's it. It's done. Well, not done, but it's there. All we got to do now is use it. So let's do that. Uh, let's take, make our sketch one active again so we can see that. Let's do revolve this profile around that center axis. Boom. There we go. Oh man, we are only two minutes in and we already got most of it made. C'est magnifique. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is, oh, I have to have to go one back. I did do one, one boo-boo. Instead of an add, that's going to be a new. There we go. Since we're doing multiple parts, let's go ahead and rename these. Part one is going to be uh, barrel bottom. And then part two should be the pin grip. So let's rename this and let's call it grip. All right, we have our grip made. All we need to do now is remove those chunks for the kind of the ergonomics on that grip. So we're gonna find one of our planes that runs either perpendicular or this way, so the top plane will work, or the front plane will work as well to create an offset plane. So I'm gonna turn my front plane on, hit right click, make an offset plane. And we're just gonna make sure we're some distance where we're away from the pin body and it's and not going through it in any way. So this looks like this distance looks good. We're gonna go ahead and click green check mark, make our front plane disappear, and let's create a sketch on this new plane we just made. We can also make sketch one inactive, that way we don't accidentally use anything. But let's create an ellipse. So usually this is a three-point circle or center circle. We're gonna use this to create a ellipse. Now, I'm gonna use some automatic geometric constraints, so follow along with me. I'm gonna find the middle of this line right here, but I, I haven't referenced it, I can't use it. So I'm gonna hit P for project. Oh no, it's U, sorry. U for project, not P for project. And I'm gonna project this line onto my sketch. It allows me to use it to reference it while I'm drawing this ellipse. So now we see this line will populate and I can find the midpoint right there. Looks great, find the midpoint of that line. And if I if I drag on over, you notice that there's this dotted line that automatically follows through. That tells me it is going to, that whatever I draw will be constrained, the center point of it will be constrained to the midpoint of that line. This is just allows you to create some smart drawing. So let's do that. Now we have our ellipse roughly put in. Let's just put in some dimensions. Our first dimension here to the edge. Uh, it says dang, can't dimension between those lines. That's right, we gotta go center to that edge. And that is going to be, I'm gonna reference in my drawing, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 divided by two, I believe. Nope, it's 0 0.4. I went with 0 0.4 on that one. There we go. So we went from the center of our ellipse to the edge, 0 
Now we're going to do our major axis. Now it says an entity can't be dimensioned to itself, but it allows me to dimension the major axis. Don't let that error code fool you. The uh, major axis of our ellipse is going to be 0 0.7. I just said that earlier. Come on. So 0 0.7. And then the minor axis of that ellipse. So let's do another D for dimension. Top to bottom. Come off to the side. The minor axis is going to be 115. So let's do that. looks fantastic. I'm moving on. I'm going to hit Shift E for extrude and now we're going to remove not all the way through but just enough to where we can leave an imprint. Merge scope is going to be the pin grip where we leave an imprint of that ellipse all the way through the barrel. But we don't want to go too far because then we start to cut all the way through the silicon. We just want to leave some distance there so we can see the grip, see that elliptical imprint, and then call it good. As far as merge scope, make sure we have just the grip. Uh, you don't want to accidentally be cutting into the barrel bottom, but you shouldn't anyways. You might run into some issues with error codes if you do have that barrel bottom also selected. Boom. Looks great, man. Let's keep on going. Back to those smart uses of our features. Instead of taking this and multiplying it six times, how about we use circular pattern? And instead of circular pattern apart, like the grip, let's do a feature. So we can actually choose this extrude. So see now it says extrude one. The axis of pattern, we're gonna make sketch one active again. And look at that. We've referenced now sketch one, one, two, three different times to do a bunch of different things. Looks great. All right. So we got feature pattern, extrude one, and the axis is going to be that center axis through our pin. It's going to be an instance of six times. Hit the green check mark. There we go, guys. We've made our sub assembly for our barrel bottom. Let's do a couple other big brain things. One, let's uh, edit, let's assign a material here. So let's go to right click, assign a material. I'm gonna type in plastic and ABS pops up. I'm gonna pick ABS. We can also right click and edit and put an appearance in there. So let's add, finally add that white sheen color into the pen. We're gonna do the same thing for the grip. We're gonna right click, we're gonna assign material but that's gonna be a silicon rubber. So I'm just gonna type in rubber and I believe silicon rubber is one of our options. We're gonna right click on grip again and edit appearance. We're gonna give it a nice orange color that it's supposed to have. And we've now made our bare bottom. However, let's go one step further with it and let's make this a true sub assembly. So we're gonna click on composite part and what this will do is it'll say, we want these two pieces to be considered one sub assembly. So when we pull them into our actual assembly, we can pull them in as one part and they're fixed in a relative spot with each other. I think it's a wonderful feature. You really don't understand the part of it. until you start clicking around, but this will tell me we're gonna make the grip and the barrel bottom one composite part. And we have a new drop down here on the bottom left. That drop down says composite parts. We can rename this to be bottom sub assembly. That way when we go and finally assemble and put all this together, those two pieces are already fixed and which just saves us time in the long run. All right, guys, hopefully this video has been helpful. If you need any, if you run into any problems, concerns, feel free to throw it down in the comment section. You guys have been awesome. I want you to stay awesome. If you've been using my videos, wicked cool. Please make sure you like and subscribe. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.